Good morning. morning. We welcome you to worship the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, A few quick announcements today. Just a reminder, we just have a couple more weeks of Sunday school. Sunday school is at 845, and we're always open to new kids. So please join us for that. After worship today, um, we are going out on a Love, Inc. furniture delivery. If anyone is interested and able, I think we'll leave fairly soon after um, the start of coffee hour. And so just find Heidi or Tim or myself if you're interested in being involved and help as long as you can. And um, many hands make light work. Love, Inc. got kind of behind with all of the blizzards this winter on their deliveries and so our confirmation kids did a lot of work a couple weeks ago we are very thankful for them they did a great job helped loving get caught up significantly and um, because of how far behind they are they asked if we'd be willing to do another delivery so thanks to Heidi and Tim for arranging everything and um, please come help us if you can Also today at 12.30, and Jim will share some more words during offering about this, Um, the Ethiopian Orthodox is doing a, congregation is doing a blessing of their new space. They specifically wanted to be sure we knew um, that they were having this event and um, they would love for people to come by. So um, 12.30, and it's the Ethiopian Orthodox space blessing. Um, today, from 5 to 7 at the Field House, JBS Field House, there is an open day for games, and the Methodist Church is sponsoring that, and it is for kids and youth and their families. And so, all you need to do is bring a snack to share, and uh, please join us. It should be a fun day. Tomorrow at 2 is the Meadows Bible Study. Wednesday, uh, Tuesday at 7 a.m. is the 7 a.m. Bible Study. Wednesday at 4.45, we will resume the Making Sense of the Cross book, so join us for that, 4.45. Um, And then 5.15 is dinner. We'll have that for a few more weeks. And then 6 o'clock is worship. 6.30 is 507 at American Lutheran, and we also are having choir here. And then um, on Thursday at 10.15 is the Sunshine Service, And then at noon is the National Day of Prayer that is sponsored by Love, Inc. And it's an ecumenical gathering. And so please join us on Thursday at noon at the fire hall for for that time of prayer and fellowship with other people. So Thursday at noon. And a reminder that next Sunday after worship, the 7th, we are having a brunch to start to raise some funds for our tuck pointing. The project will cost about $40,000, and so it is a significant endeavor for us. Our Thrivent Choice Dollars have already committed $5,000, so thanks to the committee who arranged that, and um, we are hoping to gain a lot of other donations. So hopefully, as you can see here, our side of our wall could use some um, support and so that's what the tuck pointing will help. Are there any other announcements? As always if you have any other questions uh, please let me know and I will either answer or direct you to the right person who knows the answer. With that please stand as we come together for the call to worship. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, calls our names to come and follow him. We follow without fear, for the Shepherd cares for us. Come, let us enter the gate with thanksgiving. And when I think about uh, the power of the Good Shepherd and what the Good Shepherd does for us, one of the best ways, I think, to remember the love and grace and care of the Good Shepherd 
is to remember the gifts of our baptism. And so uh, please join me as we remember our, bac our baptisms. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Please join me. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please join us as we continue with our opening hymn, God is Here.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. From the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. God speaks to us in scripture, reading, preaching, and song. The first reading comes from Acts, the second chapter. Today's reading is a description of life in the community following Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit was poured out on God's people. The new community is sustained in worship and fellowship, shares what they have, and ensures that everyone has enough. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the, the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Okay, we read responsibly Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup is running over. Surely 
The second reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 2. Doing the right things does not guarantee that one will not experience difficulties, hardship, rejection, or even suffering. Here, Christ is presented as a model for our path of endurance and loyalty to God, particularly amid adversity. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You guys can all sit around here, yeah. Like my sheep? All right, I want you all to learn a song with me and I want all of the adult, adults out there to sing too. You might know this song. So you're gonna repeat after me and then we're gonna sing it all together. I just wanna be a sheep. I just wanna be a sheep. I just wanna be a sheep. I just want to be a sheep. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep. I just want to be a sheep. And there are more verses that some of you might know to this song. But today we're just going to do the first one. Do you know all of the verses? Yeah, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all that. It's a good song. Now we're going to sing all together. And in between the verses, you have to now add the ba ba ba's. So, all right, here we go. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. Very good. So what do you think we're talking about today? Sheep. Sheep. Very good, ba, very ba, good. Ba. Sheep, ba, 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 ba. All right, so I've got my sheep here. And... What does this have to do with the sheep? Yeah? That's how they catch the sheep if they run them away. What? Anybody else? Any ideas? Yeah? Like a walking stick? Like a walking stick. They use it to walk along because they're walking a long way maybe sometimes with those sheep as they graze and whatnot, and you're right, that's how they catch them or guide them. You know, do you think a sheep might ever wander off into some place that wasn't very good? Yeah. Maybe with a wolf or some place they could fall or something like that? Yeah? So what would you use this part for? Get what? Getting them like the next. Next, yep, yeah, right. Like you catch them along like that, right? And move them around. So it wouldn't be a mean thing though, right? It would be just because you didn't want them to get hurt, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you think we're ever like sheep where we might wander off, wander away from what God wants us to do? Yeah. Uh, yep, sometimes, I know I do. How does God act like a shepherd with a little hook when we wander away? Huh? Brings us back. Brings us back, right? Brings us back. When God gives us rules and kind of guides us in the Bible, sometimes it might feel like a bunch of rules and like it's boring or mean or unfair, but those rules help guide us back to a good way of living so that we can live with love with the people around us and we can live with love and respect to God. So sometimes God's rules 
or the people in our lives who tell us that we made a mistake, they're like this shepherd's hook where they guide us back to the right path. All right, does anybody know what this might be? Yeah? Olive oil. Olive oil. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's cooking oil, but it's supposed to represent anointing oil. And I've read this a few places, so uh, the, um, the farmers can tell me if I'm wrong on this. But what I have heard is that back in Jesus' day, sheep would get all sorts of bugs and little critters in their fur, in their wool, in their ears and stuff, and they, they could really hurt the sheep or even kill the sheep. And so um, the shepherds would take oil and rub them in their ears and rub them in their wool to try to keep those bugs away. And that's how, if you ever see in the church, when we anoint people, we put oil on their heads, it's a way of reminding ourselves that shepherds used to do this. And just like a shepherd protects the sheep, um, God protects us. So when you think about how God might act in that way, that God might protect us or anoint us, how does God protect us? Keeps us safe. Keeps us safe? You guys have maybe moms or dads or grandpas and grandmas or teachers, people who watch over you, right? And their whole job is to keep you safe and help you grow well. So God gives us people that help keep us safe. What else? Do all of you have like a house or an a yeah. apartment or a trailer yeah. mm -hmm. where even though it's stormy or bad weather, you don't have to worry about getting hit by lightning, do you? Nope, you're inside your house, so you're safe. So God gives us shelter. God gives us rules that keep us safe. You know, just like at school, a rule might be that you can't just leave school without telling anybody or you can't run across the street. God gives us rules to keep us safe too. All right, what do I got in my little cup here? Because they can't see it. Grass. grass. Now, how does grass relate to a sheep? Yeah? A sheep eat the grass? Yeah? Anything else? They live in the grass. They lay in the grass. It keeps them, like, warm and soft and happy. And so in the psalm we heard today, we remembered that the shepherd gives the sheep everything they need. The shepherd gives them green pastures, and helps them to be by still waters so that they have lots to drink, and the shepherd takes care of the sheep. What kinds of things has the shepherd or God given you to take care of you? A place to live? Clothes? Water and food? Parents? School to go to school in so you can learn and do new things? Have any of you taken medicine if you've gotten sick yes. or gone to a doctor? Do you have firefighters and police officers who watch over you? Yeah. yeah. We might not eat grass, but we know that the Good Shepherd gives us everything we need to live. And so this week, I want you to hum the little sheep song, and I want you to remember the sheep. But also, more than that, I want you to remember the Good Shepherd. And remember that the Good Shepherd is always watching out for you and me. So let's pray. Repeat, repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank, you for being our good shepherd. thank you for being our good shepherd. Thank you for correcting us, thank you for correcting us. And, guiding us. and guiding us and providing for us. Providing for us. Amen. Well, thank you for coming up. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus uses an image familiar to the people of his day to make a point about spiritual leadership. Those who listen to Jesus are led to abundant life. Here begins the gospel. Jesus said, very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and abandoned. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. 
The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep following him because they know the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. Ask Cole, and he will tell you, my husband Cole, he will tell you that a surefire way to watch me lose my cool is to talk to me while someone else is trying to talk to me. This happens, as I'm assuming it does for most moms, all the time. Cole will be trying to get my attention and tell me something. Meanwhile, Landon will be trying to get my attention. To make things more fun sometimes, sometimes the phone rings in the middle of that, and maybe I hear as well a ding of an email or a message coming through on my phone as well. And then it's like my brain cannot figure out which person to answer to, let alone what anyone is saying. And I just start to shut down and my patience runs thin very fast. Sometimes when I feel like there are a lot of people calling for my attention via, uh, via emails and calls and messages and voices, I have found myself saying out loud, or at least in my head, your call will be answered in the order in which it was received. <laughs> this is not to deter anyone for, from calling or emailing me. I think most of us can relate to that feeling, and it's just a part of modern life. But in those moments, the only way I can regain enough focus to really respond well to anything is to pause to figure out whose voice I should listen to. Well, today's gospel from John 10 should cause all of us to pause and remember whose voice we should listen to in the greater picture of life, because we are the sheep of the Good Shepherd. The passage today reminds us that just as the sheep of the passage only follow the good shepherd, and not a thief or a bandit. We are called to follow the good shepherd and listen to the good shepherd through and above all things. Today's passage is a reminder to keep our hearts and our ears ready to listen to the good shepherd's voice. We are not called to listen to the luring voice of success or pride that causes us to work, 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 or be willing to throw others under the bus in order to get ahead. And we're not called to follow the tempting voice of wealth and luxury that causes us to always want that one more thing and be constantly focused on what others think about we, what we do and do not own. And we're not called to listen to the voice of despair that causes us to believe that our failures, our sins, the evil of the world, our losses, illness, and death have the final say. We don't listen to the lies of our self-righteousness that allow us to think that we are self-made people and better than others. And we're not called to listen to the stupidity of our discrimination, our prejudices, and our fears. There are all sorts of evil and deceitful voices that call to us constantly, kind of like those thieves and bandits in today's gospel. But we tune out those voices so that we can listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd. The voice that reminds us that he will provide us with abundant life. The, the voice that reminds us that we are beloved, not because we always get it right, but because we are the sheep of the good shepherd and that reason alone. We are called to listen to the voice that reminds us in the words of Psalm 23 that the good shepherd will lead us even through the darkest of valleys with love and compassion and promises to bring us besides the still waters of peace and fellowship with other Christians. We are called 
to listen to the voice of the one who makes our cups overflow with strength and all we need for daily living. The voice of the good shepherd is the one that we listen to, the voice who showers us with goodness and mercy all of the days of our lives. Today's message is a pretty simple one. Listen to Jesus who offers abundant life, not all the voices of this world. I should say simple to comprehend, simple to articulate, but really hard to do. Because I know that sometimes I have moments where I look back at the day and the week and the month or the year, and I realize how easy it is to spend my time listening to the voices I shouldn't be spending any time listening to. Listening to the criticism from those who have no skin in the game and don't know what's going on. Listening to my own insecurities and my own fears. Listening to the voice of the accuser, Satan, who says, you are not enough listening to the requests and responding to the requests of things that are not top priorities and not necessary and do not align with my values and priorities. I want to invite you today to be a little bit more introspective than maybe sometimes we are, maybe more specific than we sometimes are. And I want you, maybe even jot a note down in your bulletin or two, I want you to think for a moment about the following questions. Which voices called out to you this week? We had that one a few weeks ago as part of our um, nourishing vocation program. Which voices called out to you this week? And which ones did you listen to? And which ones did you ignore? How did you decide which ones to listen to? What changes would help you more fully experience the abundant life the Good Shepherd has for you? Where do you hear the Good Shepherd calling to you this week? And how can you hear the Good Shepherd calling to you more clearly next week? I encourage you to, somewhere that you'll see it this week, to write some notes to yourself about that, about the voices that call out to you, the voices that might lead you astray, and put it somewhere where you can remember the voice of the Good Shepherd and that he is the voice that we should all listen to. The good news to me in the middle of all of this is that despite our inability to really listen to the good shepherd, the good shepherd is still good. Like wayward sheep who wander off, we know that our good shepherd always comes after us and is always calling out to us. Let us trust in the presence of the good shepherd each day. Amen. We continue with the hymn of the day, the king of love, my shepherd is.
as we continue to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified and died and was buried, descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You are the shepherd who gathers us in your mighty and loving arms. Help your church to listen for your voice, especially when the voices of sin, idolatry, and oppression are thre threatened to overpower us. Hear us, O oh God. The green pastures, still waters, and dark valleys of this earth all belong to you, O oh Lord. Sustain your creation with a love that is both mighty and just. Where there is destruction, bring healing. Where there is desolation, bring abundance. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, we pray for Aaron Shudi Wazinski and all in Kivu La who are helping, and Des Moines Valley Health who are helping to respond to the crisis at High Life. We ask that you would bless and guide all of those who are walking with people who are afraid and suffering. We ask that you would watch over all of those employees who may lose their work and are fearful for their safety. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the joyous confirmation retreat and for blessing us with that. We ask that you would continue to help us surround our youth with all good things and help them to grow in the faith. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, we thank you for all of the teachers and counselors and social workers who are in our midst. We ask that you would sustain them for the end of the year. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the blessings that you have given Lonnie Myram upon his award for his teaching. We ask that you would bless and guide him. Gracious God, we thank you for Becca and all other teachers who have been noted and celebrated. Help us to celebrate all of our teachers and all of our counselors and the ways that they do good in the world. Hear us, O oh God. You proclaim shepherding love, comfort, and protection for all people and all of creation. Direct leaders in our own time to learn from your example and instruction. Give them servant hearts that they generously seek the good of all. Hear us, O oh God. You journey with us wherever our paths may lead. We pray for those feeling overwhelmed by anxiety or depression or suffering in any way. We especially remember Addison Hendel as she continues to be in the hospital. We ask that you would surround her with health and healing and answers. We also pray for Roger and Doug, Pearl, Sandra, Zach, Gail, Joanne, Linda, Todd, Charlene, Marilyn, Julian, Denny, Diane, Betty, Sandra, Winora, Joan, Jean, Stan, Tammy, Emily, Ashley, Mark, Joe, Butch, Josh, Tom, Brad, our servicemen and women, and Love, Inc. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, you are the sheep gate that gives safety to your beloved flocks. Provide protection for refugees, victims of domestic violence, those who are imprisoned, and all who are vulnerable to violence and mistreatment. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, bless those who will deliver furniture today. Keep them safe. Bless the homes who will receive the furniture from Love, Inc. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, we ask that you would bless the Ethiopian Orthodox congregation today as they celebrate. Surround them with all good things and great joy. Hear us, O oh God. You call your sheep by name and lead them through the valley of death. We give you thanks for those who have died and now dwell in your house forever. Be with those who mourn and give them hope in the promise of the resurrection. Hear us, O oh God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, 
almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. As a sign of that peace, let us share the peace with those around us. God with our tithes and offerings as a part of the Cultivating Generous Congregations program, we continue to lift up a moment in the life of our congregation in order to remind ourselves what our money makes happen here. And I'll have um, the offering start while Jim shares, because I think today's sharing might be a little longer than what I sometimes share. So Aiden, you can grab the place and we'll have the offering start while, while Jim shares. Well, good morning. I invite you to uh, hopefully look at some pictures on the screen. Uh, this is the completed sanctuary of the Ethiopian church, along with an area similar to the Centennial Hall, which is still a work in progress for the church. I'd also like, it also invite you to listen as I read a passage, a message, excuse me, from former Pastor Richard Ricker, as we reflected on the journey that has led to this glorious day, a day to celebrate with our Ethiopian sisters and brothers. Pastor Richard writes, on this historic day, I say congratulations to you, gathered to celebrate the birth of a new congregation. In many years at first, I was proud of the things we accomplished together. The comfort given at funerals, the nurturing of our youth, Sunday worship, quilts for our seniors, early morning Bible studies, and countless moments of care for those in need. Today, you are celebrating a new church that you birthed, how wonderful is that? You have answered the call of Jesus to go forth and baptize in his name. I know it hasn't been easy to share the building. I know at times there has been frustration and doubt, but you have persevered. In a world where the Christian church is shrinking, you have expanded it. I am so happy for you and our Ethiopian friends. Thank you to all who together made this day possible. Dear Jesus, Bless, bless richly this journey of our Ethiopian friends and continue to bless the ministry of First Evangelical Lutheran Church. Amen. God's peace, Pastor Richard. I also have a message from the congregation of the Ethiopian to Saudi Orthodox Church, specifically from their pastor and the congregational president of Abi Abitu. They are so very thankful for the support you have given them, for the use of our facilities past years along with all the uplifting prayers. Today is a day of celebration as they officially move into the new church home. They are inviting everyone here at first to celebrate with them and to see their church home beginning at 1230 today. I guarantee you will never see, receive a warmer welcoming. I would encourage everyone to take, make time today to take advantage, as Pastor Richard stated, how God used first to birth a new congregation. I myself would like to express a huge thank you to each of you and every one of you who upheld and supported the reason we are here to spread the gospel and to support our Christian brothers and sisters. Finally, as I sat here this morning, I looked at this sanctuary and I reflected back, and I think some of you have ancestors, grandparents or great-grandparents or parents and so forth, that were probably initially built this church. And, uh, seen it from the ground up when this was just a piece of land and the ground up. I can't imagine how those people felt the first day when your ancestors walked through those doors back there, sat down, and looked at this building and rejoiced. I bet these walls have never seen such rejoicing, such singing, such pride in a facility. I guarantee you I've walked with the Ethiopian congregation for a year. I've watched the Daily Globe building be uh, just nothing but an empty space. I've watched the baby, I've watched the pastor, I've watched the congregation as they've built and renovated the globe. I guarantee you 
that Globe Building, the bricks are going to be rocking today, just as this building rocked how many hundred plus 250 years ago, I'm not sure. But I guarantee you, we're never going to see this again. I certainly would invite you, please take a moment to stop up and see them at 1230. They are so proud and so very thankful. I've never gone there once where the pastor or a baby or someone has walked up to me and said, Jim, thank your pastor, thank your members, thank your congregation for getting us to this point. Please stand. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessing. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. Come through the gate of joy and hope, moving into the world that needs to hear the words of peace. Go in peace to all of God's people, bringing good news of Christ's abundant love for them. Amen. We continue with Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. Amen. 